what I'm talking about. Welcome to this uh, small cupping session at uh, our cupping lab. And I'm just gonna go through how we do our Q&A, uh, sorry, QC in our uh, shop every Monday. Uh, it's time for me to cup the last week's production. Uh, and then we decide which sort of roast profiles we decide for uh, based on tasting and also measuring TDS. So I'm just gonna run you through this small little session that we do. It'll be a little simplified, but uh, it's, the principles are exactly the same as we would do on our quality control every Monday. So let's get the VST uh, coffee tools program up because we use that a lot to, when we measure extraction, uh, we put in all the numbers there and we see how the extraction is. I've lined up uh, six coffees here. Uh, they're actually sample rolls this time, but normally I would put uh, two cups of each coffee. So I would have a sample of coffee and I'll put two cups above each other like this. The top one we normally grind on this ditting grinder uh, at about 18 to 19 percent extraction. And then the bottom cup will be ground on the EK grinder uh, at about 21 to 22 percent extraction. The reason why we do this is because our customers are grinding with different grinders and we need to make sure the coffees taste good on, uh, on different extractions. I find actually personally that it's a little bit easier to taste underdeveloped, uh, underdeveloped coffees on the ditting grinder um, because it will then for sure lack the sweetness that the EK grinder is very easily providing you. So with a higher extraction the coffee just feels very thick and concentrated and it's a little bit more difficult to assess whether it's sweet or not. So uh, I just find it tastes a lot more grassy, for instance, if you grind with a lower extraction on the ditting grinder. So let's say this was the same coffee. Top coffee is top cup is from the ditting, and the lower is uh, from the EK. Um, we put these cups. They can take up to 200 mils of water. That means about 200 grams of water. But when you put coffee inside, of course, there's room for a little bit less water. So the ratios, I'll write it down so you can actually see it, it's a little bit easier. We use 11 grams of coffee to 180 grams of water. That equals to about 6 grams per 100 grams of water. More or less, it's not 100% 6 grams, but uh, more or less. Now these are sort of the standards that are widely accepted around the world. So if you look at the SCAA standards, the SAE standards, the cup excellence cupping standards, they're more or less using 5.5 grams to 6.5 grams per 100 grams of water. Uh, the reason why I'm using 6 grams is because it's, it makes it a little bit less strong, so it's easier to pick up any notes of uh, roast flavor or, or um, underdeveloped flavor. If, if the beverage is too strong, I tend to find that it's a little bit more difficult to, to assess the details in, uh, in terms of roasting. So this is how we actually QC uh, all our roasts. And we do it every Monday because um, we roast Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And we wait until the following Monday before we taste any other coffees. And that's because I personally find them to taste a lot more smoky and sort of like uh, freshly baked bread when they're too fresh. So once they've been standing around the samples, we, we have them in uh, airtight boxes like, uh, like this. We just put uh, 11 grams in here and uh, we're going to cup that uh, later on today. Um, so we let them rest for uh, four uh, five days before we taste them. That's the minimum. And that's personally I find them just to open up more and it's easier to taste whether it's a darker roast or uh, it's easier to separate it from being too dark than being too fresh, for instance, because they, that will taste very similar. It just tastes smoke, smoky and roasty. All right, so the, the ratio is here. I'm gonna turn on my water boiler. I'm using the, the Uber boiler to when I cup because it's very accurate in, in water temperature. So I'm gonna boost it actually to 98 degrees. And the reason why it's 98 degrees is because you lose a lot of temperature once you get the water into the cup. So I just try to get it as hot as possible. We can't do 100 degrees on it because then you create too much air and you won't get any water out. So I'm boosting this, that means the whole tower is getting heated to 98 degrees, so the water that comes out, it's all 98 degrees. Then I'm gonna start the grinding. 
And on this EK grinder, uh, with this dial that I bought from Colgan Harman, we're grinding on 14, but I'm going to show you how to measure the extraction so you can dial in your own grinder, because they're all slightly different depending on how you calibrate the grinder. So, make sure it's clean. I normally put some piece of paper in there just to clean it, but watch your fingers. Just to get all the grounds out. And then you can start the grinder. Let's see if we have an extra cup. And the grounds should be like filter ground coffee, even a little bit finer, I think. Uh, but you need to measure extraction if you want to be very precise here. But don't go too coarse and don't go too fine. So if you're a home uh, barista or something, something in the middle would be okay. Uh, if you do it too coarse, you're just going to end up with under-extracted coffees. If it's too fi fine, the grounds will sink to the bottom very fast. Yes, and I'm knocking everything out, trying to get everything into the cup. Some coffees will have a lot of chaff, so then you try to avoid to get the chaff into the cup. But, uh, you'll just get a, a cleaner taste if you take it out. Last one. All right. So I actually, personally, my weakest point, uh, weakest uh, ability when I cup coffee is, is to smell. So I find it really hard to to separate the small details in smell. Of course, it's uh, if you're cupping a geisha coffee next to a a Brazilian uh, Bourbon. They will smell very very different but uh, these are all coffees from the same farm and they will have more or less the same aromatics so I'm not paying too much attention to that just smelling just to see if I can detect any ferment or if it's over roasted or under roasted you can easily smell that and then you can take a note but for our QC you know it's all our coffees in production and we don't really pay too much attention to the smell because the coffee is already bought we're just trying to get it to taste as sweet and uh, intense as possible when we roast it. So, oh, that smells good. So what I'm cupping today is actually a geisha from Marisabel and Moises uh, Caballero. They're coming here this week, uh, and I want to taste their coffees with them. Uh, so I, I did some sample rolls, so they're able to to taste how their coffees taste like here in Norway because we already cupped it in Honduras and uh, it always tastes a little bit different when we roast it here and with our water and so on. Alright, so I've got this scale which is great, it's an Ohau scale which you can tear just by doing this. So if I put this on I can just swipe my hand over and it'll tear. And the reason why I'm using this and not the scale on the Uber is because I'm going to measure extraction and this is a little bit more accurate and it's also a lot faster. So I normally put this underneath the uh, Uber boiler and I have a little platform here, it's just a box so that the cup gets closer to the spout so you don't lose too much uh, water temperature. Now the first cup tends to be slightly lower in temperature than the second and that's because you need to heat the end here uh, as well before you get the uh, correct temperature. So we always take one cup out, uh, just fill it up and this will be heated immediately. And that water is for our spoons to rinse if you want to do that. Uh, a lot of people like to have a rinsing cup. Now I'm going to put uh, a cup with the coffee on the scale. I'm going to tear the scale and then I'm going to start pouring and start a timer. So we're going to wait, you know, between 3 and 5 minutes. It doesn't really matter if it's 3 minutes 40 or uh, 3 minutes 50 seconds or who decided on the 4 minutes anyway, you know. Uh, the extraction is not that different, but you need to try to uh, treat all the cups at the same time. So when we're going to break the crust, we're going to try to time it. So I'm going to start a timer now and then pour the water on and just make sure all the coffee gets wet. And I need about 180 grams. 
and if it's a gram over or something, then I'll write that down on the counter. Getting the cup over here, taking the next one, and the same ritual. So that was a little bit over, so I'll write 1.5 grams over, more or less. That's 2 grams over. I'm not too picky with the 0 0.01 thing, but 2 grams over. And I'll explain to you why I'm writing this down afterwards, because we're going to measure the extraction. That was 180, spot on. Grams over. Again, two grams over, and then the last one. That was spot on. All right. Now, the water is now extracting the coffee, of course, and you'll get a lot of nice aromas. Of course, you can't smell it, but I can smell it. So, a lot of people like to smell the crust because you get a lot of these uh, kind of intense aromas uh, once the water hits the coffee. For me, it's a thing that I don't pay too much attention to. It just can tell me whether it's you know, something very interesting there or if there is, for instance, a defect like a fermented cup or something. You, quite easily can pick it up while you smell. So just stick your nose in, try not to touch the cups because then the crust will break down and it will sort of stop the extraction a little bit. Now most of these cups uh, smells really floral. There's one that smells a little grassy and that's this cup. And, uh, you can already tell on the, the crust that it's sort of starting to break by itself. And that's a good indicator that your roast is a little too light. It can also come from a cold brewing water, but here the water is the same temperature so it shouldn't be a difference. It can also come from uh, underdeveloped roast, uh, although it's dark it can also be underdeveloped. So the, if the coffee is still green inside it will fall down faster. Um, if you get a very thick crust which, with a lot of gas bubbles, it just means you're roasting a little bit darker than I am. Uh, because the darker you roast, the more gas you sort of uh, create during the roast process inside the beans, and that gas will sort of hold the, the particles up in the, in the water surface and creates a lot of bubbles and so on. So it's kind of like a crema on the espresso. So it's been uh, 3 minutes 50 seconds now and I'm going to start breaking and I do that by stirring. So I'll, I'll stir 3 times in the surface of the cup while I'm smelling. Some people like to stir from top to bottom. So you'll take the spoon there and stir all the way to the bottom 3 times. The standard in Capo Excellence and SEA is to just do it in the surface. The important thing here is that you stir, try to stir the exact same way on all the cups and the um, same amount of time. So if I stir five times in these cups and three times in that cup, the extraction will be very different, especially if you stir from top to, to bottom. So if you want to stir from top to bottom, you also need to grind a little bit coarser because you tend to extract more the more you stir. So first two coffees, smells more like a dark chocolate that's a little fruity actually. Uh, and I know the first one is a Katuai from, from Honduras and it's very classic uh, aromas from this variety. This one smells more fruits, a little bit more floral, a little bit less of that sort of dark cocoa kind of aromas. And here you see the crusts are already baking so they're probably a little too lightly roasted. So 
Still smells very floral and citric. If your crust is also falling to the to the bottom and and your uh, your roast degree is very you know, dark, it can also be that your airflow is not efficient or something like that. It still smells great though, I have to say. All right. So you notice that I was skimming the, the surface, that's because you get this kind of a foam on top after you stir. And that foam, it's kind of like the crema, it sort of has a little bit of particles in it and it tastes a little bitter. So we try just to take that away before we start cupping. Uh, because we're going to taste with the spoon, so we're going to take some liquid from the top of the cup and then slurp it into our mouths. And if you get a lot of uh, sort of coffee particles in your mouth, the mouthfeel feels, you know, very gritty and it's not very pleasant. So that's why we remove that. So it's just, it's just like skimming, if you look at this cup, it's just like skimming uh, when you're making stock, you just sort of take two spoons and you, you push the foam backwards and take it out with one spoon. That's a very efficient way of doing it. Some people use one spoon, some people use uh, two spoons, it doesn't really matter. Now, they're extremely hot and I, I've noticed that uh, a lot of Asian cuppers are able to start cupping straight away. I'm personally not able to do that, I'll just burn my tongue. Uh, so I like to wait a little bit, but I normally cup or taste the coffees when it's quite hot. I tend to find that it's easy to taste if it's underdeveloped when it's very hot. And then once it cools, you'll get more sweetness and all the aromatics out. Um, so I'll normally cup it when it's very hot, when it's sort of hot and then when it's lukewarm and then as it cools off. Uh, but I'm rarely cupping when it's very cold. I mean, then, then it just normally tastes very malty and, and uh, strange. But a good coffee will taste better and better as it cools. A bad coffee will taste worse and worse. Uh, and that's because you're just able to taste more. Uh, the liquid is closer to your body temperature, so you're able to taste more of what's in there. So if it's bad coffee, you'll taste more of the bad stuff. If it's a good coffee, you'll taste more of the good stuff. So it makes sense. All right, we're gonna measure the extraction on some of these cups. So what I do then is to take a small cup. Let's take the first one, and then let's take number four because that was where the crust was falling down very fast. And you know, if this were all the same coffees, it can give me an indicator whether I'm baking the coffee or whether it's uh, too lightly roasted or something. Uh, I've read a lot on blogs and also Twitter and stuff that you're trying to aim for the highest solubility. But I find that sometimes not to be the case. Uh, I was just measuring one of our coffees uh, this morning actually. And we did some tests last week and, uh, and the, the coffee with the highest solubility, that means I was able to get the highest TDS, total dissolved solids, into the cup by doing this method uh, on that particular coffee. That particular coffee tasted awfully underdeveloped, so it was just grassy and malty and tasted under-roasted. Whereas some of the other coffees that were really aromatic and tasted floral and fruity and sweet, they had a lower solubility. So don't believe everything you read in coffee. If, if someone says, tells you, you know, everything is like this, then always question it because it's not necessarily written in stone. Uh, you know, you have to also go by taste, not just by measuring. However, if you have one coffee and let's say I'll measure one cup that is, the TDS is uh, 1.4 uh, and with the same grind and same type of extraction it will read TDS 1. Then it's a good indicator that you're doing something wrong in, in the roast process. But what I'm talking about with, with uh, that particular coffee that I tasted that was higher solubility than the other, it was just by 0 0.03 TDS. And those kind of uh, differences can also occur because there was uh, one gram more water that I didn't register or, you know, I stirred a little bit more in one cup or... So these kind of small differences are uh, naturally occurring when you're doing this method because it's not 100% equal every time. What I'm talking about is the huge differences. That's when you can say, okay, this coffee is totally baked because the TDS is one and the other one is uh, very good development because the TDS is 1.3 and when you taste it you normally get that confirmed that the baked one will taste very hollow, lacking sweetness 
uh, taste bitter and flat, whereas the one with the high TDS will taste sweet and uh, have a nice sort of oily texture and so on. So what I do now is I use these syringes and I'm going to take 10 mils from the one cup. And it's important that you try to do it the same way on all the cups, because if you put this in the bottom, you're going to take a lot of grounds out and that, that means you're extracting more of those grounds. So just do a very slowly draw from the top of the cup and then I put it into another cup. This is to cool down the liquid and also to homogenize the, the liquid, the sample that I took. I'm going to do that on the other one. 10 mils and then put it into the cooling cup. Now these cups are always cold. Then I'm going to take two new cups because you want to make sure that the temperature of the liquid that you put on the refractometer is not too hot. That will alter the, the measuring because the, the lens will be affected by the temperature. So what I do now is I take three mils, so that means up to the number three on this syringe. So I draw a sample from the sample, three mils. I'll put on the syringe filter and just squeeze out the sample into another clean cup. And then I'll do that on the next sample, three mils into the next cup. You can also do two mils, you can do four mils. The important part here is that you do it exactly the same because I find that the more coffee you squeeze through these filters, you'll increase the TDS by a, a fraction. So just try to be consistent, that's what's important here. Make sure your lens is uh, clean. And the reason why we have to filter these uh, coffees, you don't have to filter it with the syringe filters if it's a V60 brew, for instance, because you're already filtering out the, the undissolved solids. But here there's a lot of undissolved solids in the liquid, there's particles and so on, and you need to filter that out because we're gonna measure only the dissolved solids. And that's why we're using these filters. So make sure the sample is cool. Take a little sample with a pipette and then put it on the lens. Just a couple of drops to cover the lens. Close the lid and then you have to wait another 10-20 seconds. And then you push go and you measure the extraction. You measure the TDS actually, not the extraction. So you'll notice it goes up a little bit when you push because of the temperature it needs to reach equilibrium with the, with the lens. So 1.5. So let's put that into our uh, Coffee Tools program. Uh, the TDS, which is the highest, uh, the, the number in the top here was 1.15. I had 11 grams of coffee, which is already there, and I had 180 grams of water, so 180. That's brew water. So the total beverage weight is, of course, 11 grams of coffee plus 180 grams of water, that's 190 grams total. And you'll see I ended up on a 20% extraction. Well, that tells me actually that uh, probably this roast is a little underdeveloped because normally I'm easily hitting 21% on this grind setting on this grinder with any coffee. Uh, so it means maybe the roast was slightly off. We'll see. We'll see if, how it tastes like. Wipe out the sample. And then take a sample from the second one. Put it on the lens, and then let's see the TDS. See if it goes up. Always goes up a little bit. It's exactly the same, but we had oh we had the same amount of water as well. So that means the extraction is exactly the same. But you could see that the crust on this cup actually fell down before we, we broke the crust and on this one it didn't. So uh, it sort of, yeah the TDS was exactly the same but this tells me that this is probably a little too lightly roasted or underdeveloped. And this is uh, probably okay because the crust was you know, fine until I broke it. So let's take a spoon and you know I'm not a... If you want to really use a rinse cup, make sure the water there is super, super hot because they want to kill all the germs. I normally don't use it because it's just a hassle and uh, uh, normally I cup alone so I don't have to rinse. 
so a little bit of water never hurts. You tend to get, uh, you know, loaded with coffee when you do this all day, so water is good to neutralize a little bit. So what I do now to, to taste the coffee is just take a little bit into a spoon and then slurp it like it's a very hot soup. And we slurp it just to get some more air into our mouth so that air travels to our uh, nasal cavity behind there, the olfactory center, we call it. And that's where all the aromas are detected. Um, so the aromas just travel easier because they're volatile. So if you, you draw an air into your mouth, they travel easier up to your nose. And I normally spit because I do this all day, but you don't have to. But if you don't spit, uh, the caffeine will for sure affect your ability to taste. So if you, if you swallow, you know, 40 samples in a row and then uh, the sample 50, you're not going to be able to assess it very uh, precise because your body is just saying, I don't want coffee anymore. Mm. Very nice coffee. Um, definitely this this number six. It tastes actually quite dark. It's it's very very sweet actually. So I'm surprised the TDS is this low because it has a lot of sweetness and, and also body. Uh, low acidity, very sort of uh, creamy. It, it feels like uh, eating a dark chocolate that is very smooth. So not very bitter, but. Um, it has that sort of punch from uh, from a lot of cocoa, and that's the that's the Katuai from uh, Honduras, from Marcala, from the producers Marisabel Caballero and Moises Herrera. Mm. The second one is just super fruity. It's more like a, a, I would say a rose sip and almost kind of a strawberry taste of it. It's not a natural processed coffee. It's a washed coffee. It's actually with a uh, mechanical demucilage remover so um, but it's the variety Java uh, from their farm and it, it has been cupping really fruity all the time it's almost like a, a cherry candy or something like that very very nice yeah could even taste like a Burundi or a Kenyan coffee so the third coffee mm. Very easy to pick out. It's a geisha. It's very jasmine, lemon, tangerine, like super sweet. Uh, tastes like a, a ripe papaya, I would say, with with an extra little bit of citric citric uh, acidity and, and and jasmine. And the number four still has that sort of floral aroma, but also tastes less sweet, very sour, and a little grassy. And that tells me this is underdeveloped. This is not roasted enough because it's exactly the same coffee as the previous one. So the, the this one will taste a lot. It tastes sweeter. It has good intensity of the acidity, but it's more structured. Uh, it just feels richer and fuller. Whereas this uh, is very under extracted uh, in flavor. It means um, it's sour, it's lacking sweetness. Uh, and so on. But the extraction was the same as here, so this is because of the roast. I'll measure this cup just for fun to see how it uh, actually turns out. Because that's a good uh, example of the same coffee roasted two different ways. Um, and we'll see how it measures in TDS. So again, 10 mils. Let's get two cups. Sample in one cup. Take it out again, three mils on the syringe filter, squeeze it out. And if you don't want to throw this away, you can use them as a small toys for the kids. Let's clean the lens and then see what the TDS becomes. Hey Mats, I'm over here. <laughs> So let's see, it's actually reading out a little bit lower. So 1.12, 1 1.3, okay, I'll show you what happens here, 1.5, okay, so it's the same. 
It's 14, 5, 15, somewhere there. Yeah, 1.15. So the TDS is the same, but there was 2 grams more of water in the cup. So, let's see. 182 grams. That means the extraction on this one, on the first one, let's see if I have a pen. So the one that tastes sweet and, uh, and well-developed has an extraction of 20.3%. And the reason why it's a little higher than the other one is because we had 2 grams more water. Now, the other one had only 180 grams of water, so the extraction here is 20%. Point zero. It's a little bit of water there. Let's see. 20.08. I would say that this difference is not significant in terms of measuring TDS, but if you taste the flavor, it's a totally different experience now. This tastes really developed and nice, the other one tastes thin and underdeveloped. So this is how we do our QC. Uh, and we do this with all our coffees, two cups of each coffee, and we have a third one just to be sure. So we can do, uh, we'll, let's say we had 15 rows of one coffee and we'll cut them all next to each other and do the measurements and taste and then we select the best one and then we'll put that on the table with all the other types of coffee we have at the end so we can easily tell, you know, maybe this one t needs uh, actually a little bit more roasting. I tend to find that uh, getting coffees from other roasters and other baristas, whatever, I've just used this one today from, from Canada, from the champion in Canada. Someone was very nice to uh, give it to me last week. So I put this on uh, side uh, next to my own, own coffees while I was cupping. Uh, so it'll give you a perspective. So this one was slightly darker than we roast and it brought out the underdevelopedness in some of my roasts uh, a lot more easy. So you taste this, it's a little bit more roasty and then you jump to a coffee or a test roast that it's a little under roasted and you, you, it's much easier to pick up rather than if this the differences in one coffee is very small. And the opposite, if, if a coffee is very underdeveloped, you'll easily pick out if it's very roasty on the other end. So it's always good to have some perspective when you cup your own coffees so that you know in which sort of uh, landscape you are in terms of roasting. It also develops your palate. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's very easy to, to fall into the trap of uh, roasting slightly darker and darker and darker or slightly lighter and lighter and lighter because if you just cup your own coffees all the time it's it's very difficult to c compare it to where you are so I highly recommend cupping other people's coffees all the time next to your own and do it blind so you don't sort of have a preconceptions of what it's supposed to taste like it's always good to cup blind all right I think that's it for our uh, cupping session it was a little short this time but uh uh, this is sort of uh, the basic uh, cupping that we do. Uh, I know it's not perfect. We're working on new QC uh, methods. Uh, we'll probably show you that over summer if it works out better. But uh, until then, uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.